So Sidna is unhappy because I told her no, she can't get off the boat. <laughs> Today, I have to admit that it is finally time to work on the windlass. Along with everything else I'm doing on the boat right now, got to fill it up with water after having anchored out. We try to always filter our water going into the tanks. After having worked on the regular winches on the boat and seeing how crusty they were, I really don't want to run the windlass until the top part at least is serviced as well and to make sure that the gearbox is full of fluid and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to take the top off and service it today and grease up anything that needs to be greased up and get it ready to be able to have the wiring run to it and have it turn on. This tool's not quite the right size. I guess I can put the little ones in maybe. Oh, there we go. Turned easier than I thought it was going to turn. Hey, look at all that. This is the part I was worried I wouldn't be able to get off. Okay. I got my big stick. This is an ideal windlass. It's original to the boat, so it's 41 years old. I'm gonna squirt some PB blaster down in there and let that sit for a while. All right, this is sat for most of the day. The PB blaster, let's see if I can get it free. <laughs> Not yet. Knock it a few more times. Luckily, Schaefer Marine bought them out and still provides parts and support. Okay, I got it to wiggle, like this much. Let's see if we can get the rest of it off now. Hey, hey, we got it. I think the problem was all this corrosion around the shaft. I better get a rag, because if I wipe this on my pants, Tammy's gonna be unhappy with me. Does your spouse get unhappy with you when you wipe stuff on your clothes. <laughs> got my towel, got a couple of tools, got the instruction page, got the wind blowing so it can blow my instructions in the ocean. See if we can get the rest of this off. So I gotta take the chain stripper off. There was a steel bolt in the chain stripper. It's all rusted. And it looks like maybe possibly somebody has put a steel key in the keyway on the shaft right here. It looks like that might be rusted in place. So let's see if I can get that out. Steel, when it rusts, it expands. And when it expands, it gets stuck in the keyway. I'm gonna go get my little die grinder and clean up the shaft a little bit. And then I'm probably gonna have to soak that keyway in some more PB blaster, maybe even for a couple days. While I'm out of town, Todd and the kids get busy wiring the windlass. Man, it's really hard working with two aught wire. <laughs> it doesn't bend much. <laughs> so now I guess what I'm gonna do is get the other roll out and we'll run the second wire up to the windlass that comes back here. Stick it in and push it up as far as you can. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Pull it out towards you. Turn it, turn it sideways. There you go. Now let it unroll. It's a team effort. It takes four people to run the wire in this boat. Got my slave labor working. I can sit in it. <laughs> I can sit in there. Don't tell anyone I'm in here. No one shall know. <laughs> Are you going to get out of there? No, I'm fine. I want to be a child again. <laughs> Oh, 
dad did it. He connected it. I screwed these on and then zip tied this onto the wires. Yeah, if you like that spot, I guess I can just leave you there. It's like a vampire. She sleeps during the day and then at nighttime it's like. Alright. They gotta run the wires for the windlass. They gotta go down through the floor and under the floor, all the way along here, along where the batteries are, over into the breaker box. I don't know how easy that's gonna work. See what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to pull this and it's tight because you need to feed it to me. I'm coming out right here. I need to get it over here to where I can go up inside. So you need to kind of peek in there so you can see the wire moving around. So now I'll go feed that. I gotta feed the whole thing into here. So I got the wire pulled. I got the positive wire coiled up right here, waiting for the breaker. The negative wire is hooked to the negative bus bar in the back. We got our solenoid right here. Coming in, coming out to the motor. Kind of see the red sticking up right there. So now all I need is a 200 amp breaker. I decided to go with a 200 amp breaker instead of a fuse because A, it's resettable and B, it might be hard to find a fuse in other countries. After that, I should have a windlass. Because <laughs> right now, we right there. I have an alley right there, and I think it's a, uh, I think it's a rib a little bit out of place. It's been out of place for like a week, and it hurts to lay on, it hurts to move. And I'm probably gonna have to go see a massage therapist or chiropractor or something like that to get it put back in place. Okay, my extra parts came in now. It's time to get the windlass put back together. Let's go. <sighs> With all the shade up, it's kind of an obstacle course to get to the front of the boat. So we kind of put it back together the other day because we didn't you know, want to get water down inside. So I got the keyway right there. All right, let's put this bad boy back together. A little bit of lube inside the shaft area. The keyway apparently is also steel on this because that's what they sent me as a brand new one. I'm gonna put some Tef gel on it anti-corrosion might help keep it from rusting longer. The trick is to get this over the top of the keyway without knocking it out. side of the windlass is all ready to go. So now I gotta go put in a breaker and it should be working. <laughs> Let's see. Well, it is done. The windlass is wired. Should we turn it on? All right. Everybody watch for smoke. Ta-da! Now we're committed because now if it doesn't work. We have to pull it up the hard way. <laughs> you gotta really put a, weight, a lot of weight on it. You did it! The anchor is up. 
do you know what to do about the chain skipping? Leave us a comment down below. Well, do we know we have three BB? Well, we don't know. Because all of this is baby summer stuff here. Do I need to apologize? For what? For not setting up the camera. No, I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing to you. <laughs> okay, we moved the boat. It was early this morning and we didn't get it on camera. Todd, that's what Todd means about apologizing. So we moved the boat so that we could get the anchor hanging off of the end and figure out what needs to happen. The people that we talked to suggested that we move it to the other side of the, I don't know what it's called, the thing that it hangs off of. The anchor roll challenge I have is that width right there. If I take our roller off of this side, which you can see is lower than this side. That's the problem. I gotta get this in here. Well, this'll work. Until right there. I didn't make this wide enough to know if it'll clear this. And so I thought, you were up on here pulling up on the chain, I could try to lift that anchor and just see what it does. We're doing it to what? So that this chain has wraps around this more. Right, gives it a little bit more position on the wildcat. Is it a gypsy or a wildcat? Are we both right? Is one of us wrong? Hang on, get in there. All right, see right here it's binding. So let go and let me see if we can just get it in by hand. Okay. You're, you're gonna set the camera down. You need two hands on the chain because you're gonna help pull the fall. Okay. All right. Slip a little still. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe the wrong size chain for your windlass. It's so darn close, though, Gene. It's. Yeah. I've had that I mean, when you before. look at it, it looks perfect. Yeah, I've had that problem before. It's right. Like, it just drops about every fifth link. It drops out. Right. right. I say it's too. It. Uh, this is made for a bigger chain. Look, you put it up there, and you put these two links in there perfectly. Look at the slack on that one right there. Two. Yeah. yeah. And in there perfectly. Yes. Two on each saying. side, and the one that links those two. When links under load, the second low. one isn't reaching. Right. Okay. As far as the windlass goes. What we discovered was upon close examination of our chain, we actually have G4 chain on this boat, which is not what it's supposed to have. It's supposed to have 3 8 BBB, and G4 in 3 8 is the same diameter, but the links are different, so they don't fit the Wildcat properly. So we have one of two options. We get a new chain, or we get a new Gypsy. We'll decide uh, after we make some phone calls which option we're gonna go with, but in order to help that anchor fit properly on the bow roller, I made a little mock-up. Please excuse the crudeness of the mock-up, but let me show you what's gonna happen. Come on over here. So first of all, down here. So we have our 85 pound anchor right here with its shank, right? Hooked, of course, to 300 feet of the proper chain, which runs up here through this articulating bow roller, like this, to help it get over the hump, up and around the gypsy, down into the thing, and slam, bam, 88 miles an hour, we're back to the marine. Should we see how it works? So I wanna pull this in line with how it would come up through the windlass. Pull up the anchor, hits the spot. Ta-da! How's that for ya? That was pretty slick. That's kind of the idea. I think the mock-up basically works properly. Do a little more fine-tuning, sketch it up, and then uh, I can go get a price on how much it would cost to have one of those made. But uh, I think that would solve the problem really nicely. And we will 
catch you next week. Thank you for watching. We didn't forget not to leave you hanging. Here's a sneak peek into something that will help Todd breathe underwater. Ha, ha, ha.